Good evening. evening. How are you? Welcome to the show. How are things? Hope you're doing good. Hope your lives are doing fantastic today. It's me, Broadcasting Germa. Remember when I used to talk like this in every video? Everybody, what's going on? Germa here. Doing my best impression of a broadcaster. How's it? Am I peeking? Am I peeking here? I gotta check that. Actually, I told you I was gonna be live at 8. Give me a minute. One minute. BRB. Okay, so today is going to be a, a different stream. I mean, not that different. We talked about this, so what I was going to do on funny April Fool's Day. You know, got to do an April Fool's video where there's a big joke. So my joke. <laughs> I'm already kind of, I'm already laughing a little bit about this here. I'm showing. Let me let me get the camera. It's not even a joke. It's just like my fun little stream that I'm doing for April Fools. This is the April Fools stream. Pre-recorded. No, nothing I do is fucking pre-recorded. Nothing. Honking my clown nose. No, I'm not a clown. No, we're doing. We're gonna. We're doing. We're gonna do a bunch of choose your own adventure books. Trust me, this is gonna be a wacky fucking funny stream. Wait, was my title correct? I don't even know if my title is right. Hold on a second here. Gasp! There he is! No, this, but just look, I'll, I'll show you in a second. We're gonna do a poll. You'll see. I'm just gonna make a tweet. Hold on. Choose your own adventure books. And then the link. It's gonna be IRL. It's gonna have a little bit of fun. Grow a beard on stream. Wait, what? I, it would be possible, maybe, at some point in my life. When I maybe when I hit puberty. You know, there's puberty two, and that's when you're 38. Puberty one is when you get a little bit of hair, and, and you know you grow up a little bit. Your voice drops. Puberty two is when you lose all your hair. Your back starts to hurt, and drinking two alcoholic beverages makes you sick. That's kind of how it is when you're near, like, you know, pushing 40. I'm nearing puberty, too. Wait, what? I st okay, there we go. No, why? Like, why does this... I don't understand this. Every time the stream starts, and I want to send a tweet about my stream, it, it won't let me. It's just like, nope, you're not sending a fucking tweet tonight. Not for, like, four hours. It's, is my using too much internet? We'll have to do that in a few minutes. Anyways, uh, here's what's going to happen. Here's a poll. I'll show you the books first. I went to the bookstore, and I got a bunch of these. Yeah. These are choose-your-own-adventure novels for children, okay? And you guys have to decide which one of these you want to see today. And if this is fun, we'll, we, might, we might do this again another time, you know? So, here's the Abominable Snowman. This is not pre-recorded. I, I, did, why, why do you think this is pre-recorded? You make one pre-recorded joke like fucking six weeks ago or like two months ago, and all of a sudden every stream has to be one. We're just having a little bit of fun on fucking April Fools. His journey under the sea. 
And look, and you can see how many achievements there are to unlock. Do you see this? Look at how many achievements we can get. This book too. Wait, okay, wait, 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 wait. Before I wait, calm down. The Abominable Snowman is one. Journey Under the Sea is another one. That we got. We have the Great Depression. Like 1920s America Great. I don't know why this is a choose your own adventure book. But the, I don't understand what the fuck would happen there. We have Cook. Colonial America is another one. Look at 47 different choices, 23 different endings. World War II spies. And World War II, just general World War II. Please don't joke, I actually want this. This is what we're doing today. There is no joke. This is, this is the joke. This is the April Fools. Do something fucking weird on April Fools. Uh, here we go. So, I got a poll here. Which one do you want to see? Choose between dying of hunger or cold. Well, I already voted for one, apparently. So, I can't even hear. Here's the poll. Am I getting timed up for posting links in my own channel? Okay, no. There you go. Which one do you want to see? The Great Depression is, like, fucking killing it right now. That's roleplay. But I don't know, what, what's even going to happen? An interactive history adventure. Three story paths, 43 choices, 22 endings. Help rebuild the country as a civilian conservation corps member. Everything in this book happened to real people, and you choose what to do next. The choices you make could lead you to wealth, survival, or even to death. If you ch and you choose books, only you can choose the path you take through history. All right, if we read this, does that mean that these books are fucking tiny? By the way, okay, this is I I, I this is gonna be fun. There's probably like three pages worth of content in this whole entire fucking book. You understand? Look at how look at this. All right, here we go. Let's get in the atmosphere, though. That, that's important. The Great Depression looks like that World War II spies is the next one that was going to win. But here we go. Wait, you, 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 where are your glasses? You, make, yeah, you got a point. Wait, what? The Great Depression. Let's start it off here. Got a little bit of preparation here. We, I, yeah, just because it's a choose your own adventure novel and I'm reading it to you guys doesn't mean we can't have a little bit of atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? Just a little bit. Let's see where we start. What do we have to like create a character? Like how does this work? No, no, there's no joke incoming. It's just wait, where's my headphones? I built some atmosphere, and yet to, yet to, I wanted this to be a fun stream on April Fools. Four score and seven years. All right, here we go. Fuck. You heard? Was I? Was it muted? Please tell me it was muted. No, it wasn't. Great. Whatever. All right, we got. Uh. Here we go. Okay. This. Uh. Wait, wait, wait. Let's see where we start. The Great Depression, an interactive history adventure. Uh, about your adventure. Let's see what that is. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. You are living through the Great Depression, the worst economic crisis in U.S. history. The era began on October 1929 as the value of the stock in many large American companies began to fall. Millions of people lost their jobs. This is not the right music. In this book, you'll explore how the choices people made meant the difference between life and death. The events you'll experience happened to real people. Chapter 1 sets the scene. Then you choose which path to read. Follow the directions at the bottom of each page. The choices you make will change the outcome. After you finish your path, go back and read the others for a new perspective and more adventures. This is so loud and I apologize already. Here we go, here we go. You choose the path you take. Picture. That's us. From good times to bad. For many Americans, the 19...
didn't have this prepared. Just hold on a second. I rescued George when he was two years old. No, I don't, I don't, no ads. This is, my immersion's already breaking. From good times to bad. For many Americans, the 1920s were the roaring 20s. World War I was over. And businesses were booming. Many people bought their own goods on credit. They paid a small amount each month plus interest. Credit is a form of borrowing, if you didn't know. Americans also borrowed to buy stock in companies. As a company sells more stock, the stock's value rises. During the 1920s, many people entered the stock market. They believed it would keep rising and they would make a fortune. A few people did become wealthy, but the gap between the earnings of the richest and the poorest Americans was huge. Uh, farmers didn't share in the great wealth of the 1920s. Many had loans to pay, so they produced more crops and livestock. But people weren't buying more food than they had before, and the price of farm produ uh, products fell. So you see here, uh, the unemployment rate from 1929 to 1939, which actually shows you here. You can see. Not inclined romantically, what are we even listening to? This is a hit from the 1920s. I don't even know what the fuck it is. F uh, many farmers lost their farms. Poor farming practices and drought also caused a desert in a large area of the Midwest. People called it the Dust Bowl. In 1929, a crisis hit Wall Street in New York City. Most buying and selling off... <laughs> most buying and selling of U.S. stocks took place there. Companies that, why are we learning like the history of the United States stock market? Companies that had loaned money to stock investors began to ask for their money back. Investors didn't have the cash, so they sold their stocks to raise it. As they sold, the value of the stocks fell. October 24th, 1929 was called Black Thursday as stock prices plunged. They fell even more on October 29th, Black Tuesday. By this time, many companies were having trouble getting loans. They began to fire workers. As a result, people fought bought fewer products. Each year, hundreds of banks went out of business, wiping out their customers' savings accounts. <laughs> okay, all right, here we go. Here we go, here we go. The content begins here. World War I veterans were among the most hardest hit. Many soldiers gave up well-paying jobs to serve in the armed forces. Congress agreed to give these men a bonus to make up for their lost wages, payable in 1945. But that wouldn't help the veterans during the Depression. Many of them came to Washington, D.C. to protest. They were called the Bonus Army. President Herbert Hoover hoped charities and state and local governments could help people, but those groups didn't have enough money to help everyone. In 1932, Hoover ran again for president. His opponent was Franklin D. Roosevelt, FDR, as he was called, won the election. He promised a new deal for Americans. That phrase became the name for the government programs he proposed. Whoa, we're changing videos here. Hold on. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, whatever. Uh, one of the largest New Deal programs was the Works Progress Administration. Starting in 1935, the WPA put people to work building roads, public buildings, and parks. Others took photos, painted murals on buildings, or wrote plays and books. The WPA s soon became the nation's largest employer. Another program, the Civilian Conservation Corps, provided jobs for thousands of young men. You are facing hard times. Will the New Deal help you? Is there anything you can do to help yourself? <clears throat> to be a farmer... No, sorry. To be a former soldier seeking government help. Turn to page 13. To be a teenager living the life of a hobo. Turn to page 47. To be a young man working for the Civilian Conservation Corps. Turn to page 73. What are we doing? Let's get it. I, I, I think I know what I want to do. I mean, ho you gotta be a hobo, right? We have to be like a, a train jumper. That's what we're doing. We're do there, you can see, just, just for transparency. Okay, so here we go. The life as a hobo. Okay, let's turn to page 47. We're like almost like a third of the way through the book. All right, where's 47? To be, we're gonna start life as a teenager living as a hobo. 
Here we go, right? 47. Okay. I, I didn't hold my finger there, so that means it's a set in stone. I didn't hold the finger there. All right, here we go. Uh, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. This is where I... That's, but that was just a little bit of background. Now I get to act. I get to show you my fucking acting. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so this is... As you can see, there's Franklin, uh, Franklin Roosevelt there. Signing the... Uh, that's his, his, his inauguration, I guess. Okay, here we go. Gotta get different lighting here, because we're, uh, we're riding the rails. Riding the rails. <clears throat> I'm so hungry, your brother Bobby says. When's Mama gonna find another job? It's June 1933, and a month has passed since your mama lost her job at the shoe factory. Your father went to California late last year trying to find work. He hasn't written in weeks. The kitchen cabinets are almost bare. Your two little sisters, Jane and Molly, cry every night because they go to bed hungry. <sighs> President Roosevelt says he's going to create jobs, you say. But who knows when mama will get one if she can even get one. Bobby stands. Mr. Roosevelt also said we've got nothing to fear but fear itself. Wait, wasn't that John F. Kennedy? That was JFK. We can't be afraid. We've got to do something. Like what, you ask? Get jobs to help Mama, after all. I'm 14 and you're 15. We're old enough to work. You know there are no jobs in this part of Indiana, you reply. <laughs> then we can ride the train rails. Take the trains to where the work is. I've read about kids our age doing that. Bobby, maybe a boy like you can do that, but I'm a girl. Besides, it's dangerous. When did we pick a gender? Okay. Uh, maybe, Bobby says, but we have to do something. He's already stuffing his few clothes in a pillowcase. Are you coming? To stay home, go to page 49. To go with Bobby, turn to page 53. Are we gonna go with Bobby or are we gonna stay home? And why am I even fucking wearing these? Go with Bobby? Stay home? <laughs> go with Bobby. Alright, let's stay home. We're gonna stay home. We're not going with Bobby. I'm gonna hold my finger here just in case it's the wrong idea. Alright, page 49. It's only it's right here. It's the next page. Okay. Go if you have to, you say. Just be careful and write to us when you find a place to stay. Bobby goes out the back door and heads towards the railroad station. An hour later, your mother comes home. Molly and Jane tagging behind her. She's carrying a loaf of bread and some apples. The church didn't have much to give today, she says. Where's Bobby? I don't know, you lie. Probably out playing ball. With your father gone, Bobby could get into some trouble. Since you're the oldest, I hope you'll keep an eye out on him. For him. Yes, ma'am. Your stomach churns with worry. How could you have been so stupid? Bobby can't be out there by himself. Uh, to go after Bobby, turn to page 50. Or to tell your mother where Bobby is, turn to 57. Are we going to go after Bobby or are we going to tell on him? What are we going to do to Bobby? Go after him or tell on him. <laughs> Why are you guys saying page numbers? Snitch on Bobby? Alright. We're gonna, we're gonna snitch on Bobby. I'm gonna tell on him. It's literally the next page. You run to the rail yard, hoping to kill- Wait, what? No, 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 don't run! Don't get hit by the train, either! Alright, we're gonna- <laughs> 57. There we, there we are. That's us, right there. Uh, you run into the kitchen. Mama, I do know where Bobby is. He went down the rail yard to catch a ride! 
Why did you let him go? Says Mama. Because we need food, and he wanted to do something. You think he's the only teenager out looking for work to help his family? Mama picks up the phone and calls the police. From what she says, it sounds as if the officer knows all about Bobby. She hangs up and smiles. Oh, they caught him before he could get into a rail car. They're bringing him home. Oh, yeah, choices fucking matter. You are sorry that you had to tell on Bobby, and your family still needs help. You decide to look for a job tomorrow. Maybe someone would want you to do house cleaning or babysit. Even if they only paid you in food, it would be enough to help your family the end. <laughs> what a fucking terrible ending. Now we're going back. Go back to what, what page? We're going after Bobby. <laughs> God, the e that's the quickest fucking ending I've ever seen. <laughs> where, where were we? I don't even remember. Wait, there's, a, there's like opportunity to go to Chicago. Alright, to go after Bobby. We're gonna go after Bobby. Fuck it, we're going after Bobby. Page 50. Here we are. Rewind. Let's get, hold on a minute. I should have put this, I should have had this all ready to go. Here we go, ready? Let's just... Ah! Ah! Uh -uh. You run to the rail yard, hoping to catch Bobby before he leaves. Your heart sinks as you see a train pulling away. Looking for someone? You turn and see a short, bearded man coming over a hill near the train station. His clothes are dusty and worn. My brother, you say? I think he was on that train. You wanted to go with him, or were you trying to stop him? Trying to stop him? How many girls go riding the trains? Oh, more than you might think, the man replies. <laughs> Are you a bum? You ask. The man's face reddens. Missy, if you're going to spend any time around the jungles, you better watch your words. A bum just stays in one place looking for handouts. Won't work to save his life. Me? I'm a hobo. I work for my food. When I can find work, he holds out his hand. They call me Shorty. You shake his hand. What did you mean, the jungles? He motions you to follow him over the hill. On the other side, you see a cardboard bunch of shanties and a group of people around a campfire. Shorty says, welcome to our jungle. That's the name for our little camp by the tracks. And not just for hobos either. Some families come down too. Anyone's welcome. Just don't cause any trouble and share whatever food you got. Shorty motions to a big pot over the campfire. Are you hungry? Stay and eat. To stay at the camp, turn to page 59. To keep going after Bobby, turn to 61. Stay at the camp or go to Bobby. What are we doing? Stay. 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 You want to stay? All right. But... I've seen a lot of stay. We can, we can do a poll for the major, major, like, telltale endings. You know what I mean? We're going to stay. Okay, let's stay there. Stay at the camp. Turn to 59. Okay, 59. we got to get a little, we got to get some different. So we're at the camp right now. Let's see what it looks like. Stay at the camp, 59. Here we are. Okay. Let's, let's get a little, uh, we're at the camp now. The good fire in front of us. It's a little dark out, you know. It's not that bad. Uh, well, a little food would be good, you say. Shorty leads you to the fire. The, the hobos are tossing carrots, potatoes, and other vegetables into the pot. We call that mulligan stew, Shorty explains. Whatever you found during the day goes into that pot at night. We go down the main streets looking for scraps of food. Hitting them stems, we call it. Some of what we find is pretty bad, but today we got lots of good stuff, even some meat. When the stew's ready, you sit around the fire. Everyone talks about all the places they've been. You could listen to their tales forever. But then you remember Bobby and your mother. She must be worried sick. Shorty, I have to go, but I'll be back. And I'll bring something for the stew. You're still worried about Bobby and what's going to happen to him. You only hope that he'll meet someone as nice as Shorty to help him along the way. The end.
This book sucks. This book sucks. <laughs> 22 endings? Yeah, 22 endings, AKA every fucking two pages, they, they come to a conclusion. All right, where's, where, when does somebody die, okay? Let's find it. <laughs> I need, we need to go back. We're going back. We're, we're go, we, we need to go after Bobby. Go after fucking Bobby. We're, I'm gonna see what happens to Bobby. Just hold. We listen. We need to see what happens to Bobby. So you look around, and no one's in sight. But you follow Bobby as he climbs into an empty freight car. After a few stops, your stomach is grumbling. You haven't eaten since breakfast, and it's almost dark. <laughs> Maybe we should get off and look for some food, you say. I'm hungry too, but if we get off, who knows when we can catch another train heading our way. Uh, to keep riding, we're going to keep riding the train, or we're going to get off at the next station. <laughs> we're going to eat Bobby. Wait, what about our ambient fucking train music? Okay, we're, we're on the train. That's fine. We can be on the train like this. Stay on the train. So this is the next page here. Staying on the train with Bobby. We caught him. Here we go. <clears throat> Back on the train. You're right, you say. Let's keep going until morning. It'll be easier to look for food then anyway. You and Bobby fall asleep on the hard floor of the railroad car. You awake hours later. A group of teenage boys joined you during the night. You feel the train come to a stop. Can't get a fucking brake sound, like the brakes of the train. God damn it. Fuck you, YouTube. <laughs> Where are we? I gotta do this. Where are we? You ask. Chicago, one of the boys says. Almost right downtown. You wake Bobby. Hey, come on, let's go to the fair. You need money to get in, he says, still rubbing sleep from his eyes. We need to get jobs first, don't you think? And we're going to the fair, we're going to look for a job. I mean, I kind of want to go to the fair. All right, we should go to the fair. That's what I, if I was like, I would want to go to the fair. I mean, getting a job is hard. So let's uh, go to the fair. 65. 65. Maybe we can sneak in, you say. Come on. You see signs for the fair. It's just a few blocks away, but guards are all around it. Why would there be guards on a tr on a fair? Oh, look, Bobby says, pointing at a guard sleeping near the storage area. As you reach the guard, you sprint past. You're inside. This must have cost millions of dollars, Bobby says, as, as he looks around the fire grounds. You nod, know, thinking how many poor people could use that money. But even in the Great Depression, people need to have fun. And the fair provides jobs as well. Suddenly, you have an idea. Bobby, maybe we could get jobs here. You walk over to a food stand. The woman running it looks at you suspiciously. Uh, what can I get you, she asks. Uh, actually, my brother and I are looking for jobs, you tell her. The woman snores. Let <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> me try that again. <laughs> The, <laughs> the woman snorts. <sighs> you and everyone else, don't you know that all the jobs at the fair <laughs> were fail filled months ago? Now, if you're not going to buy anything, beat it! You and, Bobby, but you and Bobby quickly walk away, damn it. You spend the rest of the day asking everyone you see about a job. They all give you the same answer. Finally, you end up at a hot dog stand just before the fair do uh, closes. The owner gives you each a cold hot dog... He was about to throw away. You munch on the hot dogs as you walk back to the train station. 
Maybe you'll have better luck somewhere else. The end. <laughs> There's not 22 endings in this. That's a fucking lie. I want to find a page where somebody dies. You know what I'm saying? Twenty-two stories. What's next? All right, I'm I'm going straight for the for the for the pay dirt here. I'm going for fucking either Journey Under the Sea. Or the abominable snowman. That, the, that was like an educational story. I had all these sound effects ready to go. But I, hold on, let me, let me like, I gotta fucking like, yeah, we, we're doing a different one. We're doing the abominable snowman right now. Cause look at, look at how many paths there are in this one. And apparently these are real. This is, this is, this is not just like a, a children's non-fictional story teaching you about the great depression. Abominable snowman. You really learned a lot, thanks. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Here we go. Here are some reviews of this boy. Wait, 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 the abominable, is it gonna be fucking a little bit cold? If we're talking about the abominable snowman. You know what I'm saying? Kids love reading Choose Your Own Adventure. Let's see what they have to say. <clears throat> These books are like games. Sometimes the choice seems like it will solve everything, but you wonder if it's a trap. That's Matthew, age 11, said that. I think you'd call this a book for active readers, and I'm definitely an active reader, says uh, Ava. She's 11. You decide your own fate, but your fate is still a surprise. That's, uh, Chris said that. He's age 10. Come on in this book if you're crazy enough. One wrong move and you're a goner, says Ben. He's 9. You can read Choose Your Own Adventure books so many wonderful ways you could find your dog or follow a unicorn, says Cecilia at 11. Hey, the Abominable Snowman. Alright, here we go. Let's see how we see how this one starts. A lot of, a lot of copyright bullshit. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. Beware. And warning. Ah! You <laughs> didn't have these queued up. Right, hold on. What the fuck is it? This book is different from other books. You and you alone are in charge of what happens in this story. There are dangers, choices, adventures, and consequences. You must use all of your numerous talents and much of your enormous intelligence. The wrong decision could end in disaster and even death. But don't despair. At any time, you can go back and make another choice. After all, it's your path of your story and change its results. You and your best friend Carlos have traveled to Nepal in search of the fabled Yeti, or Abominable Snowman. Last year, a while the two of you were mountain climbing in South America, a guide told you about the legendary creature, and you haven't stopped thinking about the Yeti since. Carlos arrived and went straight into the mountains when a Yeti sighting was reported. He hasn't been heard from in three days. A late monsoon storm has moved in, and the mountains are almost impassable. You know Carlos will depend on you to do the right thing, but what is it? You are a mountain climber. Three years ago, you spent the summer at a climbing school in the mountains of Colorado. Your instructors said that you had natural skills as a climber. You made rapid progress, and by the end of the summer, you were leading difficult rock and ice climbs. That summer, you became close friends with a boy named Car- Los. The two of you made a good climbing team. 
Last year, you and he were chosen to join the international team. The expedition made it to the top of the two unclimbed peaks in South America. One night on that expedition, the group was seated around the cook tent at the base camp. The expedition leader, Franz, told stories of climbing in the Himalayas, the highest mountains in the fucking world. Here they are. I can't read any of those names. I hope you did. <clears throat> the Himalayas form a great natural wall between India and China, with Nepal tucked in amid the peaks. Everest, K2, and Annapurna are the best known mountains in the Himalayas. These and many other peaks have been climbed. Still others lie in remote areas where few humans have gone. There, said Franz, in the high valleys beneath the snowfields, lives the Yeti, sometimes called the Abominable Snowman. The Yeti is said to be a huge beast, perhaps a cross between a gorilla and a human. People cannot agree what it is. Is the Yeti dangerous? Carlo asked one time. I added that. Some say it is. Other people say the Yeti is very gentle. Have you ever seen one? No, almost no one has. The best proof of the Yeti's existence is a set of very large footprints discovered in the 1950s by British expeditioners. No one has ever photographed that fucking guy. But still the stories persist. You and Carlos decided then and there to find the Yeti. When you returned from South America, the two of you raised money from the International Foundation for Research into Strange Phenomena. Yeah. I, that's real. Your goal, proof positive that the Yeti exists. You will find and autograph the Yeti. <laughs> find, and photo find and photograph the Yeti. Not, give him an, not get his autograph. <laughs> this is what brings you to Kathmandu. Kathmandu, what is it? Capital of Nepal. Your problems, though, have already begun. Two days ago, Carlos left by helicopter to look over the terrain near Mount Everest. The helicopter returned without him. The pilot told you that Carlos decided to stay up at the Everest base camp to check out a report that a Yeti had been seen. He had a radio transmitter, but you have received no word from him. The weather turned bad and radio communication was interrupted. You have an appointment to speak with R. N. Runal, the director of expeditions at the Mountain Research and Authority on the Yeti. He knows of your plans. You need his help with the official permits for the expedition. He will also have good advice and information. But what of Carlos? If you decide to cancel your meeting with Runal and search for Carlos, go ahead. If you feel that Carlos is okay, go ahead with your plan to meet Runal. Go after Carlos or have the appointment and you get get ready for the expedition. This is an important this is important. We're going to get a poll on this one. I think this actually is the first major poll. I mean that this the writing on this one's not geared towards 10-year-olds. I mean 10-year-olds said it was a fun book, but it, I mean it was better than the other one. Okay, which one? Carlos or Runal? Where are we going? Where's, where's my chat room? There it is. <laughs> I, I, this is like, I have 10 hours of this song. What are we doing? Carlos or Runo? I think we're going after Carlos. Let Carlos die, but he's like your best friend, and you went to like fucking rock climbing school with him. Why do you want to see him die? It should be snowing. Well, it's not snowing yet. We haven't gone on the expedition yet. It was rainy. Okay. We can build. Like, I, I think we can. The, the expedition will have. We'll have some better. Okay, we can go back to this later. Let's get a. Where is it? There we go. Okay. Is this pre-recorded? How would it be pre-recorded if I'm talking in chat? <laughs> That's like not possible. This would be a, an elaborate pre-recorded scheme if I was able to respond in real time in the video to people in the chat room. 
No need for Carlos to just slow us down. I, I don't. I think we go. For, yeah, we go for Carlos. Free typed chat. Yeah, I got like a thousand alt accounts here. <laughs> Fake chat. All right, here we go. Cancel. Cancel meters. Go right for Carlos. Page seven. Look at this. This is showing. This is showing where we're going. That's us in the helicopter. Here we go. You telephone Mr. Runo, the foreign ministry. This is an emergency, Mr. Runo. My friend Carlos is missing at base camp. I need help right now. Of course, I understand. Please allow me the honor of coming with you. I know the region well. You gladly accept the help of Mr. Runo. His reputation as a mountaineer is excellent. He is able to arrange for a Royal Nepalese Army helicopter to meet you at the, tr at the airport. Two hours later, you land at the Everest base camp where Carlos was last seen. His red nylon mountain tent is still there, but the storm has erased all footprints. Most reports of the Yeti have them well below base camp, but it is possible that they are up this high. Runal says, as the two of you stand by the tent looking at the glacier and the high peaks. If you and Runal search below the base camp in the valley, turn to page 9. If you go above the base camp, turn to page 13. Are we going to search below base camp, or are we going to go above base camp? Sleep for yeah, sleep for 12 hours. What do I have for weapons equipped? Hold on a minute, I got like... I'm talking a lot. Let me just get like this fucking chapstick. A little too much. All right, uh, I think I think we're gonna go. I think we're gonna go above. Above, thirteen. Just so sure you can see. One more time, you can see that. Thirteen. <clears throat> there we are climbing. Who's the third guy? Above the base camp are the dangerous Seracs. These huge blocks of ice are always moving, and people climbing through this maze of ice are in constant danger. Runal leads the way. You both have crampons on your boots. A slender red and yellow nylon rope links the two of you together. It's a safety rope. Watch out, jump! A block of ice quivers and tumbles to the side, sending clouds of snow and ice crystals in the air. Runal had seen it just in time. You move more slowly now, wary of these treacherous Seracs. On the backside of a Serac, as large as a two-story house, you find him. Carlos is sitting in the sun, fidgeting with his camera. Hey, what are you guys doing here? That's what we want to know. You scared us to death with your disappearing act. What's up? Carlos puts the camera away, and after you introduce him to Runal, explains that he found tracks. Yeti tracks, perhaps. Hmm. And followed them. He tried to radio, but the weather blocked it. The tracks faded, and he couldn't find his way back to the camp. He had been sitting and waiting. Runal examines one track protected from drifting snow, and explains that they are blue bear tracks, and not yeti tracks. So disappointed. You go back to the helicopter, the helicopter, <laughs> the helicopter, and return to Kathmandu. The next day, you go to the shop of Sangi Podang Sorba, a well-known Sherpa guide. Carlos stays with Runal, getting the permits. You enter so that we fucked up. You enter the store, and there we not we don't have this yet. We gotta have like general music. Uh, you enter the store, and there behind a the counter is, uh, stacked with dried food in plastic bags, tanks of gas for mountain stoves, and wool hats. Is su It's, uh, you introduce yourself, and immediately you like this man. He is warm and friendly, and recently he has been with the Japanese expedition to 
Pumori and a French Everest attempt. Maybe you should ask him to join you as you search for the Yeti. So he's a merchant. Sangi the merchant. Uh, ask Sangi to come along. Or wait and talk it over. South American mountain region. He's coming along. We, we, we need as um, big of a party as we can get. Because, you know, I can, like, push these people in front of the monster when he shows up. I'm bringing up... Uh, what, page 23. I want, I want Sangi to come along. 23. Okay. Recruiting. Uh, how about joining us on our search for the Yeti, Sangi? He smiles and hesitates. Then he picks up two sticks of incense. One is longer than the other. He lights them both and their rich fragrances fill the air of small stores, of his small store. You see, as one fragrance merges with the other, we do not know the difference between them. Only when the shorter stick burns out will we know which stick was the fragrance of rose and which was the fragrance of magnolia. You are puzzled by his talk of incense. You ask, so, what, what does that mean, Zangi? What does that, what does that mean? It does not mean anything. It only is. You are really confused now. What to do? Perhaps you should leave this talk of incense alone and forget about asking Sangi to join you. Maybe he's crazy. If you back out of the offer to take him on the expedition, do that. Turn to this page. If you persist and try to understand his point, turn to page 38. This is like an all-for-one, like all one-for-all scenario. No, he's coming along. You always have, you want you want the crazy guy. He'll know that he'll like he'll like put his hands in the yeti shit and like smear it all over his face and stuff, and we'll find him. No, we're going. We're going. Persist. Thirty-eight. See, we're fine. We're gonna be fine. Okay, so you want to come? You want to? Uh, wait. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so you want me to choose which stick is rose and which is magnolia. Is that it? Is it a test? If I'm right, you'll go, and if not, you won't. Sangi smiles, displaying gold caps on the three of his upper front teeth. He nods his head. Here goes, you say. The longer stick is Kashmiri rose incense. Sangi claps his hands, brings them up to his forehead, and bows slightly, saying, Namaste. I am at your command, master. It is decided. He will accompany you. You have chosen the right one. Some things just happened by chance. This was one of them, you ask. Where should we head? Anapuma? The Everest region? What do you think, Sangi? Uh, many have seen Yeti prints near Everest, but there is the region near Anapurna and the Machu Picchu Fishtail Mountain, where we could have good luck. The Everest region has been more fully explored. Annapurna is less, less well known. Uh, choose Annapurna, the, uh, I I'm going to have trouble with these words. Choose Annapurna or choose Everest. Everest has been mostly already been explored. Annapurna has not. Which one are we doing? <laughs> Annapurna. 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 Yeah, that's what I was going to pick too. Turn to page 50. All right, here we go. 50 it is. No more going back. So we got to choose a little bit different music here. Back to, back to the cold. It's pretty freezing now, you know? Two days later, with permits obtained and supplies brought, you, Carlos, and Sangi start the long journey from Kathmandu to Pakhara. Three days after that, you and your party, along with twelve porters to carry the supplies, are camped in a field high above the valley floor near a small village called Dumpus. Do you see that? Is that real? Dumpus? Back to Dumpus. This is in the same universe as sorcery, apparently. Holy shit. Spelled the exact same way. Is this a real place? It's all connected. 
This is sorcery too. Anyways. That night, after a dinner of brown rice and... What the hell? What are you doing? Where's my sounds? Where's my sounds? Jesus, that is fucking loud. All right. Too loud. Turn it down. Uh, that night after a dinner of brown rice and lentils, onions, and garlic, you sit in front of your red mountain tents watching the moon play on the snowy white flanks of Annapurna and Dalgori. It is silent and chilly. You are tired from the climb, but glad to be alive in this magical kingdom. With the darkened village behind you, you feel as though your group might be the only people on Earth. Surprisingly, you see a light flash on Annapurna. It repeats, then again. It may just be a reflection, or another party, or it may be a signal from someone in trouble. Or maybe it's a signal from the Yeti himself. If you think it is a signal, turn to page 67. If you think it's just another climbing party, turn to page 65. <laughs> but the Yeti's like, eh, come over here for a second, I gotta talk to you. That's not gonna happen. I think it's another party, but, you know, that's just me. The Yeti has smoke signals. It's a signal. I think it's the Yeti trying to get us to come over. I think the Yeti can talk, actually. I think it's a signal from the Yeti, I do. 67. I think it's a signal. Okay. Look at that flashing light, Carlos! Once again, the light blinks three times, then stops. Then it blinks again. What do you think? Could it be trouble? Sangi says, That could be an emergency signal. But it is very far from here, across the valley and just below the glacier. We could go, or I could remain, and return to Pakora and report it to the authorities. How much time do you think it would take to get back to Bukhara? I can go faster than our whole group. Perhaps it would take a day. Then they would send a helicopter. Without outside help, there is little we can do if there is someone in trouble. But they may need help quickly. Respond to the call for help, or let Sangi return and get a helicopter. I think, I think, I mean, the smart decision is have is the weirdo go back to, to camping. Let's respond. Okay, so we're gonna respond to the call. 85. Oh. I don't even, what page were we just on? Okay. <sighs> it takes you most of the night to thread your way down steep, tricky trails to reach the valley floor. Once there, you start up the immense Annapurna, scrambling over rocks and skirting the glacier. It is cold, and the night seems long to the three of you. Several more times you see flickers of light. Now you are sure you've done the right thing. Someone needs help. Near dawn, Carlo says, Stop. I think I see something. And before your very eyes, You see what you had come for. Dancing around a large fire are eleven yeti. You have stumbled into a yeti celebration at the end of the monsoons. You quietly watch, taking pictures and making notes. You have proved at last that the yeti really does exist. Months later in Paris, France, at the International Explorers Conference, you and Carlos are given the highest reward for your work. Success is exciting and lonely. Good luck, the end. Why are they, what, where, which one of these was that, is what I want to know. Which one of those? We need to go back. God damn it.
Hold on. We're gonna go. We're gonna send Carlos back. This is too easy. You're not supposed to lose these. All right, let's go back. You know, you know the drill. You know, like the joke. The joke that I was gonna do right now is this thing, right? Like here comes the joke, the thing you've seen over there. Like... Yeah, it was funny when you did it twice. Oh, uh, okay. So respond to the call. Send Sangeet back to get help. We're gonna send Sangeet back. I already beat the game. I beat the fucking game. Eighty-three. It's auto playing tape rewinds. I just glanced over and saw that. Whatever. Uh, you go ahead. Let's see. Where is it? 83. Okay. We, I don't know why I'm making this game harder. We already beat it. Okay, get this fucking thing off. Yeah, alright. You go ahead, Sangi. We'll stay here and keep watch. He vanishes into the dark night. There is no wind, only the silence of mountains and the sky and the stars. Somewhere in the distance, you hear the rumbling sound of water as it flows and drops from glaciers that embrace Annapurna. Carlos says, I wish you go and find and help them. I feel selfish sitting here safe and sound. So near dawn, you set off without your guide. The going is rough and you no longer see the flashes of light. Above you towers Annapurna with her white flanks of ice and snow. Then the sky lightens and the stars seem to disappear. Into a pale blue of the sky, sunlight bursts on to Machapuchi. It seems to explode into gold and silver. Within minutes, the light reaches Annapurna. You stop for a cold breakfast of cheese and bread washed down with tea. <laughs> Machapuchi. Go to page 99. Soon you are at a vertical wall of rock. Above it you see the face of ice. Carlos drives the spike in. You both rope up and proceed slowly up the rock. Over the rock you meet an expanse of firm snow, but under it lies hard, cold ice. On with the crampons! You lead the way, probing carefully with your ice axe to seek out any hidden crevice. The climb seems endless, and even though you are only 5,000 meters up, the air is thin and the breathing is actually pretty hard to do. Breathing is hard to do. <laughs> Why? Well, I have been. I was gonna use this for something. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger screaming, shut up. Whatever. Here we go, back on this. Uh, by mid-morning, the sun is like a blast furnace. It reflects off the ice that surrounds you, and in the air of ultraviolet rays burn your skin. You both put white zinc ointment on your noses and lips to, so you don't get sunburned. You had taken a sight bearing, and now you saw the flashes, but that was at night. Now in daylight, it's not easy to be sure where just the flashes came from, but you have a good sense of direction, so you keep going. Near moon, you gain a crest, and it's kind of dark out now, and uh, near uh, it's nighttime, and then you see it. It's a Palladius Courier aircraft, one used for mountain flying. It lies in the snow, crumpled like a forgotten toy. The tail section is twisted, but the wings are intact. The engine is buried in snow. Wow, cool. The reaching the plane, you open the cabin door. Huddled in the plane are the pilot and two passengers. One of the passengers is unconscious. You do what you can for the people. Later that day, a Royal Nepal airline helicopter finds you. All is well. It was the right thing to give help in the mountains. Congratulations. You lose. The game's over. The end. I want to get, I want to get to this part. I want to get to the part with the robot cats. Why did we win so easily? All right, what, uh, let, go back to the climbing party. We're going to go back to the climbing party. Because I, I have, a, I think... Spo stop spoiling it. Well, I, we we why we've beaten both of these so quickly. <laughs> Give the survivors the cold hot dogs. All right, we're gonna go back. We're gonna go to the survivors. It's not a signal from the Yeti. 
If you think it's another climbing party, turn to page 65. I just saw a unicorn. Why can't... Here we go. <sighs> Let's watch it. I'm not sure it's anything more than someone playing with a flashlight. For the next two hours, you sit and watch the spot where the flashes came from. But the flashing has stopped. It's cold now. And you are glad to have your parkas. The stars are bright, and you are awed by the immensity of the mountains before you. <laughs> I can't read now. Here we go. You turn in, tired from the long hike and anxious to get on with the search for the Yeti. Four hours later, at about 2 a.m., you are awakened by a wailing noise near your tent. <laughs> you unzip the tent flap and peer out into the darkness. There, near the pile of gear, is a dark mass. Maybe it's a Yeti. You reach for your camera. Maybe you can get a picture. Then the mass rears up and lurches for the tents where Carlos and Sangi are sleeping. What do you do? What should, what should you do? If you want to go, if you want to click the picture, turn to page 86. If you decide instead to grab an ice axe and try to frighten the creature, turn to page 87. What are we, quick, what are we doing? Quick, come on. Ice pick or take the picture. He's getting angry. All right, take the picture. 86. Click. The digital camera flashes with its solar battery operated strobe. What a creature. It's really a Yeti. It has a huge hairy body, a giant head, enormous feet. It is frightened by the strobe and it spots you. It heads right for you, making awful sounds. Half growl, half gurgles. If you run, turn to page 37. If you stay put and fire the camera strobe in hopes of scaring it off, turn to page 114. Are we running or are we taking more pictures? <laughs> Keep clicking. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna take more pictures. 114. The digital camera keeps on flashing its strobe. The Yeti stops in its tracks, searches frantically for something, a friend perhaps, and then turns and with amazing speed vanishes into the night. Unfortunately for you, the shutter in your digital camera jammed. The end. Why would there not be a part two to that? Why wouldn't I just keep going? <laughs> they don't have any friends. I don't, but why wouldn't I keep, why does it have to end there? Ah, camera was jammed. I'm going home now. I didn't die, my camera jammed. That's not, that's not the same thing. All right, what? Let's run. Let's run, let's go back and run. We're gonna run for it. <laughs> Bad book. Oh my god. I can't wait to learn about World War II spies. This is like an education stream. This isn't even a choose your own adventure book. Here we go. This is where it gets intense. You know what I'm saying? Intensity. Hold on. Run! You run for your life. You dash for the trees at the edge of the cliff. Maybe you can hide there. The Yeti is fast. Faster than you've ever thought. Then you are falling, slipping into space over the cliff. Miraculously, the Yeti reaches out and grabs you, saving you just in time from certain death. 
he carries you back to your tent, puts you down gently, and slips off into the night. so many tabs open. Okay, there it is. So you can't die in this game. <laughs> yeah, you actually can't die. The Yeti finds you and saves your life and like brings you back to the tent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's fucking funny. Try the ice axe this time. Okay, we're gonna try the ice pick. All right, we, we need we need to go back here. And close some of these tabs. All right, that's fine. We need to get our uh, the, the scary music back. Oh no, the intense music. That's good. Okay, we're gonna go. I don't even know where the fuck that was. Time to find it. Okay, here we go. Uh, 85. No, and that's... 83. Shit. Where the fuck was that? I'm, I don't know where it is. I forget what, what page were we just on. Okay, here we go. Found it. We raised. We're gonna raise the axe this time. Yeah. Here we go. I found it. We we picked up the axe and we're gonna fucking try to chop off the Yeti's fucking hands. Here we go. Too loud. Hold on. Way too loud. Okay, here it comes. You raise the axe. The Yeti, with eyes flashing, grabs it from your hands and snaps it through as if it were a twig and hurls it over the cliff. The Yeti speaks in controlled tones. Leave us alone. Your world has enough. We wanted what you have, your cities, your crimes, your wars. We would join you, but we don't want these things. Leave us alone, this is a warning. With that, the Yeti leaves. You stand and look at the fleeting figure. What will you tell the International Foundation for Research into Strange Phenomena? That's it, the end. You're not allowed to die in these games, you can't. You can't fucking die in this game. I'm reading the page with the unicorn. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck is ha what is happening here? What's happening with the unicorn? Like, what is going on here? And why can we not see this? <laughs> Look at this smiling face. <laughs> is that a Yeti or is that fucking... Carl from Aqua Teen. Need, I need, this needs to be focused. Look at how happy they all are. This is this is not a scary book where you get like in trouble and get hurt. No, everyone's friends in these books. All right, World War Two Spies was actually the the second most uh, highly voted. This is, this is not gonna, this is gonna be terrible. It's gonna be the same goddamn book. What, 
Journey under the sea. Journey under the sea. All right. Journey under the sea. Or World War II spies. Which one? <laughs> like this, it's just gonna be a book. The World War Two spies is just gonna be a, teaching you about what happened in World War Two. Let's get a poll. Right, why can I not go to? Oh, there we go. Okay, spies or under the sea. Like children's choose your advice. Like that this is the only ones that they have. What do you want to say? Spies or a a book where we definitely can't get in any trouble or get hurt. Yeah. Impossible to lose children's adventure like ten year old story. Or learn about what happened in World War Two. Equally, probably terrible. I guess we're learning about World War II. Oh, let me reapply. Get a Goosebumps one? <laughs> this is all they had. This is all they fucking had. Although some of these, some of these pictures actually look a little bit... Some, yeah, some of these look pretty funny. Alright, World War II spies. God damn it, really like You guys, this is not no one's got this is not Alright. World War Two spies. But what should we do here? Like how about No, it shouldn't be that dark. No, that's scary. That's that's fine. It's the ambient, you know. You get plenty of good scan lines on this stream. Why is this? This is like a three minute ad for this fucking one minute video. How long is this video? All right, World War Two Spies, an interactive history adventure. About your adventure. No, we're not going to do that. You already know what happened in World War Two. You wanna know what happened in World War II? Uh, Hitler lost. Okay, now let's be a spy. Like, Hitler was a douche, and he lost. Done. Keep going. Let's start our journey. <laughs> Spoilers, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. No, this is just more history. We, we, we need to get to... Okay, here we go. We need, like, mystery music. Exclusive content is being added every week. So keep checking back for all the latest... I was still... Oh, my God. God. Uh, I, I guess we're going to start here. What? I don't even know what was just playing in the background. There was something like ad. You just heard the whole thing. Mystery music. This is like spy music. How's that sound good? Okay. <clears throat> you are a college student living in Denmark's capital, Copenhagen, with your family. Since Germany invaded Poland, you've closely followed the events of the war. It's now April 1940, and you hate the Germans for their brutal ways. Denmark shares a border with Germany, so your homeland could be the next target for the Nazis. Early on the morning of April 9th, you wake up to a loud buzzing outside your house. German planes. We've been invaded, you say to your sister, Helena. The Nazis are in control now. You learn they have invaded Norway, too. The Netherlands and Belgium are taken next. 
The Germans let the Danish government stay in power, but Danish leaders have little control, and Denmark's military is too weak to put up a fight. You and your friends think that the Danish people can resist on their own. We can start a secret newspaper, your friend says. You know that the official Danish papers can't print anything the Germans don't like. It would be good to tell people the truth, but you want to do more. I've heard that the British are training agents to carry out resistance, you say. But Carl points out that you'd have to go to London first. Maybe you should stay here to look out for your family. But you think you can do more to fight the Germans if you can get to London. Go to London or stay in Copenhagen. <laughs> what is this RuneScape music? <laughs> I was gonna say Harry Potter. <laughs> Fucking RuneScape. <laughs> I'm, go I'm going to London. I'm going to London. Page 15. <laughs> what page is this? All right. <laughs> that night you tell your parents about your plans to go to London. They're worried, but your father says, I'm proud you want to help defeat those Nazis. Uh, Jorgen is with you too. You take a fishing boat to Sweden. That country has been remained neutral during the war. They haven't taken a side. Resistance leaders there can help you get to London. In London, Danes in the Resistance direct you to the Special Operations Executive, a British agency. The SOE trains resistance fighters from all the countries occupied by Germany. This music seriously has to- I gotta change this music. This is too whimsical for this kind of subject matter. Escape. Okay. Okay, here we go. You go to London. SOE agents teach you and Georgian how to be secret agents. You learn how to shoot, use explosives, pick locks, and parachute. You receive fake identity papers and learn how to disguise yourself. After weeks of training, you're eager to use your new skills in Denmark. We have two missions planned, a British officer says. We need two men to parachute in with a radio so the resistance can move easily and contact us. If you go, you can take Jorgen with you. We also need one person to smuggle weapons to arm the resistance. Which would you prefer? You'd feel safer working with Jorgen, but just setting up a radio seems boring. Getting weapons to the resistance fighters would strike a blow to the Nazis right away. Help with the weapons, or go to the radio. Parachute. Weapons. Weapon. I I think we're doing weapons. Yeah, we're doing weapons. To help with the weapons, we go to 17. Here we are. <clears throat> you wish Georgian luck before boarding a truck that takes you to an airfield. You board a British military plane heading to Lolland, a large island belonging to Denmark. The plane drops a huge crate of weapons. Your job is to follow and make sure the weapons get right into the right hands. Your parachute floats you safely to the ground. <laughs> yes, this is Clue. <laughs> Waiting for you... Wait, was that the right page? Turn the page. Waiting for you is another Danish SOE agent. You know him only as Mr. Miller, which is not his real name. He calls you by a fake name too, Mr. Jensen. After speaking English for so long during your training, it's good to speak Danish again. Miller tells you, I have to take these weapons to a safe house and then give them to the resistance groups. You can come with me, but I also have a message for the resistance group in Copenhagen. You can deliver it for me. You like the idea of going to, to, to Copenhagen. You miss your hometown, but you know the importance of building up the resistance in Lolland. Stay in Lolland and go back to Copenhagen. Stay in love. Turn the music down. Okay. I some songs are way louder. Stay in loud land. I'm gonna stay in love. Thirty six. Okay, here we go.
Uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of in no man's land here. Where'd it go? Dark mystery. Truth or dare. That's not... It's really weird has been going on ever since Mexico. The king followed us home. Truth or dare. Truth or dare. No way. Or you die. Break Olivia's hand. I can't. Well, you don't really have a choice. How do we get out of this game alive? We can't. It's only ends when all the players are dead. Truth or dare. Rated PG-13. 21% on Rotten Tomatoes. Garen fucking teed. You take the crate to a large, beautiful house belonging to a woman named Monica Witchfield. She greets you and invites you to stay with her. During the next few weeks, you help Monica find more weapons dropped from British planes. One day, Miller arrives with a man named Keeler. He's a saboteur carrying out acts of sabotage for the war effort. The Germans are searching for him. We need to get him to Sweden, Miller says. Monica says, Kyler can stay there until they arrange a boat. After several days, you lead Kyler through the woods to the boat, but near the water, you see a German patrol waiting. German, German waiting. What are you doing here so late at night? One soldier asks. Let me see your papers. You reach for the fake papers the SOE gave you back in London. Where are yours? The soldier asks Kyler. Instead of answering, Kyler turns and runs. The soldiers fire at him as they look away. You take out your gun and toss it into a bush. You would be dead for sure if the Germans found it on you. The firing stops. You don't know if Kyler is dead or alive. The soldier nearest you pokes with his gun. Get in the truck. They take you to the local... Gestapo, Germany's toughest police force. You know what will happen next. You'll go to a concentration camp in Germany. You won't be much help to the resistance anymore. You only hope to survive the war. And that's where it ends. Uh, okay, that's... That got dark. Game over. Uh, why would I throw... Wow. Uh, I'm not sure why I would throw the gun away. I mean, at least... Fuck. Uh... Journey to the bottom of the ocean is a fun one that we have here. When, when, when can I, like, take out the sniper rifle and, like, sniper rifle Hitler? Back to the spies. No, that book is... No, when it goes behind... When I throw it behind my back, that means done. That means well, I ain't going back there. You know how, how much fucking broken glass is here? I would get very seriously injured. I made sure not to be able to re rewind to the other books. I put broken glass all over here. <laughs> April fucking fools, you know what I mean? <laughs> Alright, journey to the center of the universe. Journey under the sea. Back to Dumpus. Hold on. Uh, positive uplifting music. I'm not going to play the RuneScape music. Okay, I'm spo- no spo- stop spoiling shit. This one actually looks like it could be pretty interesting. Okay, here we go. No, I, this is not what I thought it was. What else is here? You are a deep sea explorer searching for the famed lost city of Atlantis. This is your most challenging and most dangerous mission. Fear and excitement are now your companions. It is morning and the sun pushes up on the horizon. 
The sea is calm. You climb into the narrow pilot's compartment of the underwater vessel seeker with your special gear. The crew, is this diners, drive-ins, and dives, or is this me doing, what is this? Am I like Dr. Teeth in the Electric Mayhem, or is this like under the fucking sea? Okay. Let's try this again. Now this is like every YouTube tutorial video music. I'm not using this. They go, fold the sheet, pull it up over the bed, take the DIY paste you made, and there you go, you made your own shoe rack! No, get... I'm not doing fucking YouTube tutorial sounds. Ocean music. Here we go. Perfect. <clears throat> now begins the plunge into the depths of the ocean. The Seeker crew begins lowering by a strong but thin cable. Within minutes, you are so deep in the ocean that little light filters down to you. The silence is eerie as the Seeker slips deeper and deeper. You peer out the thick glass porthole and see strange white fish drifting past, sometimes stopping to look at you, an intruder from another world. The cable attaching you to the moray is extended to its limit. You have come to the rest on a ledge near the canyon in the ocean floor that ancient myth says leads to the lost city of Atlantis. You have an experimental diving suit designed to protect you from the intense pressure of the deep. You should be able to leave the Seeker and explore the sea bottom. The new suit contains a number of the latest microprocessors enabling a variety of useful functions. It is even a built-in waterproof smart tablet with a laser communicator. You can cut loose from the cable. The Seeker is self-propelled. You are now in another world. Remember, this is a dangerous world. An unknown world. As agreed, you signal the moray. All systems go. It's awesome down here. If you decide to explore the ledge where the Seeker has come to rest, turn to page six. If you decide to cut loose from the moray and dive with the Seeker into the canyon in the ocean floor, turn to page four. Explore the ledge or cut loose and dive into the canyon. Let you guys decide this. Cut loose, or cut loose, or explore the ledge. Okay. <laughs> this music's putting me to sleep. Uh, cut loose is winning by a lot. I need to reapply. I swear, I mean, it's like springtime and I still have these dry ass lips. <laughs> Everyone's like going to bed. Alright, we're cutting loose. You decide to cut loose from the moray and dive with the seeker into the canyon, to the ocean floor. Okay, that's it's winning by a lot. So, uh, that is uh, page four. There we are right there, you can see. It's us going down to the ocean floor. Drawing. Uh, the Marais asks you for one more detailed status report, and you comply, telling them that you are going to cast off from the line and descend under your own power. Approval is given, and the Seeker slips silently into the undersea canyon. As you drop into the canyon, you turn on the Seeker's powerful searchlight. Straight ahead is a dark wall covered with a strange type of barnacle growth. To the left side, you see what appears to be a grotto. The entrance is perfectly round. 
as if it had been cut by human hands. White lanternfish give off a pale greenish light. You see bubbles rising steadily from the floor of the canyon. Investigate the bubbles. Investigate the grotto with the round entrance. Hmm. Want me to examine the auto? Scan, li scan lines are doing fucking great. Bubbles. Grotto? Your auto's grotto? I, w I was seeing grotto. Okay, here we go. Let's get... I'm not playing another ad on stream. Um, wait, we need... Let's just change the music now that we're, we're doing something different. Here we go. Okay. Let's check out the, uh, let's check out the grotto. Page eight. Ooh, whoa. It's a fucking steamboat down here. Pirate boats down here, I think. Maybe we can find some buried treasure. You pilot the seeker through the rounded entrance to the grotto. Once inside, your searchlight picks up what appears to be docks and piers along the grotto walls. The seeker's searchlight is not very powerful, however, you do have a special laser light which would light up the grotto like daylight. Unfortunately, the laser light can only be used twice for very short periods before it must be recharged aboard the Marais, now more than 2,000 feet above you on the surface. Do you use the laser light, or do you cruise further into the grotto? <laughs> Alpha gameplay. <laughs> the, mu the music's always too loud. I think we're gonna cruise into the grotto. Page 13. You cruise silently into the grotto. Its roof slopes upward and you follow the slope. The depth finder shows that you are rising quite rapidly. Perhaps you will reach the surface in open air. The roof of the grotto stops sloping upwards. Before you is a perfectly round metallic hatch made of a metal that you have never seen before. With the mechanical arm of the seeker, you try to open the hatch. No luck. Activating an electronic pulse generator, you bombard the hatch with electronic pulses. They are not meant to be hostile. If you decide to blow the hatch open with an explosive charge, 24. If you decide to continue transmitting radio communications through the hatch, 27. Are we blowing this place up? Or what? Blow it. Explosives, explode it. Vi always violence. It's always violence with you guys. Always violence. Let's blow the hatch. 24. Okay. <clears throat> blow the hatch. Oh my fucking god. The only way to get beyond the door is to blast it away, or so you believe. The Seeker's laser cannon is powerful and you position the Seeker to fire. Pushing the fire button, you send a powerful beam at the hatch. Nothing happens. Then you advance the cannon control to full emergency force. Again, you push the button and the beam dissolves the hatch instantly. A flood of seawater rushes into the giant hole, carrying you with it into an air-filled canyon beyond. The water fills the canyon with speed and explosive force. You see several people scurrying towards the escape hatch. It is too late. You did the wrong thing. There's no turning back. You lose. You're dead. You died. Okay, let's, let's communicate. Full emergency explosion. Fucking goddammit. Alright, back. 
You decide to communicate with 27. We're communicating through the hole. I give it to the elephants and the horse and the lion. Like, I have 500 tabs here. Okay, there we go. That's better. Okay. Uh, uh, the radio transmission seems to be failing, and you grow tired of sending signals through the closed door. You are just about to give up when the door suddenly swings open, revealing behind it a cavern with another door. You enter the cavern cautiously and receive a radio signal in English. It tells you that you are welcome here, but that once you enter this place, you may never return to the world above. It is up to you to decide. Go on and investigate what might be Atlantis or retreat. Did we get to the end of this fucking one too? Did we beat it already? Go in and investigate. 42. Yeah, so we're investigating whether or not uh, what's in here or not. You are greeted by a group of people who look like ordinary human beings, except that they are gill-like slits on their necks. Their bare feet have skin between the toes, forming a web. They order you put your dive suit on, pull you quickly from the seeker, and lead you towards their city. On the way, they show you the zoo, where there are animals from the world above the sea. There is a glass-like cage surrounding them, filled with air, allowing them to live below the sea. So, my young friend, the leader of the group says, you may have the gill slit operation and live like one of us. Or you can refuse and join the other animals in the zoo. What a choice, but you if you have the gill slit operation, you will never be able to escape and return to the surface. If you agree to the operation, turn to 57. If you want to be in the zoo, go to 58. <laughs> Uh, we're going... <laughs> Let me see what it says. Yeah, alright. We're going to the zoo. 58. <laughs> no. I refuse to have this insane operation. I don't want to become a fish! The Atlanteans try to convince you that life with them will be happy, useful, and long. Yet you still refuse. Sadly, they give up their arguments and spray you with a special mist that immediately knocks you out. Several hours later, you gain your senses only to find that you are in an underwater air tank where you breathe naturally. Your closest neighbor <laughs> is a horse. Your closest neighbor is a horse <laughs> who looks at you with sorrow and understanding. The Atlanteans have built a small apartment very much like the ones in the world above the sea. People come by and look and talk with you. Maybe you've made a real mistake. They no longer want you to join them in their world and way of life. You refuse their offer and now you are a prisoner in a zoo. Why? Well, um, I deleted the fucking horse tab. That's right. I got rid of it. Alright, let's do the... Let's do the operation. <laughs> let's agree to the operation. 57. I can't, I can't read when it's like that. There. Agree to the operation. A large white light shines down on you as you lie on the operating table. You become unconscious. Pleasant thoughts, sounds, and pictures accompany your mind. When you awake...
you feel no pain or no real change at all. But now you can breathe underwater and join the Atlanteans in their world. For several weeks you explore the world under the sea as you have never seen it before. Without the heavy oxygen equipment on your back, you feel a marvelous sense of energy and you glide through a world of beauty. Your two guides have become very good friends and they take you on adventures in the deep, exploring the ocean bottom and getting to know the fish and the other sea creatures. It's a very exciting life indeed. You like it, but you regret that you will never again know the world above the sea. That's it. We found Atlantis and we became a fish and we won and we beat the game. I'm not, no, we're going back. We're not going in the fucking grotto. Let's let's go back to before. Hold on, go back, go back to before. Go back to before we even went inside the grotto. We're not going in the grotto. We're gonna we're gonna just we're gonna retreat. We're gonna retreat from the grotto. Okay, here we go. What? This is the wrong sound effect. This is nature sounds. Here we go. Okay, so we're gonna, we pulled back to before we even went inside the grotto. You know what I'm saying? Throw the foot, throw the... Well, uh, all we have, um, like, colonial America and world... These are, I don't, I'm not even going to open these. You understand? These two are not even going to be opened on this stream because we know exactly what this one is. This is just the world... And I, colonial America is going to suck too. This is all we got for, like, the next, like, little bit, 20 minutes or so. And then my LOL April Fool stream is going to turn off. <laughs> Colonial America. That's the fucking worst one that we could possibly open. Here we go. It's too scary for what is, what's happening right now. This might be a little too scary. When does the funny part of the stream start? It's not funny, it's just, it's different, it's weird, it's April, oh, April Fools, how weird, you're doing adventure books. I was gonna throw this back, just to be angry. Back aboard the Seeker, you radio the Marae that you are surfacing to make a plan. While rising out of the giant crevice-like canyon, you spot what appears to be a road running along the top of the ledge. What is this? The scientists aboard the Marais had mentioned the possibilities of finding signs of the ancient civilization such as roads. You must investigate. Turn to page six. All the way back here. Wow, okay. This is cool art. Um. I need like the, the fun music back. Ocean music. When does the funny stream come on? Lullaby of the ocean, eight hours of relaxing music. That sounds good to me. Some of these are live streams. People just broadcast a live stream of relaxing music. Imagine if that was your job. Imagine telling people that shit. Oh, what do you what do you do for work? Oh, I'm a you know I'm a, I'm a I'm pre med. I'm a doctor. No, that's cool. What do you do? I, 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 I'm a writer, you know. Oh, wow, writer. You got, you're working on, like, books? Choose your own adventure? Nice, dude. What about you? I broadcast uh, lullaby ocean music to YouTube all day. And what do you do? <laughs> I'm a fucking tuber. <laughs> you're live streaming a book right now. April Fool's got ya. All right, here we go. I'm a, I'm a tuber. Come on, guys. All right, three hours of the best relaxing piano flute. What? Either you're spending time. What is piano? <laughs> what, is, what is a piano flute? All right, here we go. Your dive suit is a tight fit and takes you some time to put it on. But look, we got to see the artwork first. Come on. It's a crowded room. Is that a snake? There's a snake on me. 
I would be probably freaking out about this right now. Your dive suit is a tight fit and takes you some time to put on. Finally, you slip from the airlock of the Seeker and stand on the ocean floor. It is a strange and marvelous world where your every move is slowed down. You begin the exploration with your halogen searchlight. The ledge hanging over the deep canyon is your starting point. You just want more time to focus on recording. So that's a long ad. Uh, a strange feeling overcomes you. Part warning, part terror. Then you see it. The Seeker is in the grips of a huge sea monster. It is so similar to a squid. But it is enormous. The Seeker is just a toy in its long, powerful tentacles. You seek shelter behind a rock formation, knowing the spear gun will carry you. You carry will be useless against this monster. It looks as though it will destroy the Seeker. Fish of all sizes huddle with you in an attempt to escape the monster. Stay hidden or try to escape. I didn't even choose that yet. I didn't choose that. Uh, he can fucking hear me. We're gonna, we're gonna run. I'm running now. I ain't fucking hiding after that. Okay. <laughs> Moving cautiously, you climb up the sides of the canyon. Hope this music doesn't fucking fit. Epic music. So I can do like a, a, a monologue here. This one's called Time Gate. Moving cautiously, you climb up the sides of the canyon, hoping to reach the ocean floor. Leaving the Seeker in the grips of the giant squid. You plan to signal for help with a bright yellow dye marker that will float to the surface. The Marais crew members above have been instructed to watch for the emergency signal. They will send help. Once you reach the ledge above the canyon and feel slightly safer, you see, you see the most feared of all sea creatures. A huge, great white shark. It begins to circle towards you, and you know that you are its target. You wonder whether you should fire your emergency propulsion charge that will send you rapidly to the surface. The shark is fast. He might catch you anyway. You also know that you will get the bends from the rapid rise to the surface. I'm reading this so poorly. If you decide to fire the special propulsion charge to... Uh, it's, the music is fucking with me. If you decide to wait quietly... Ah, oh, Wait quietly hoping the shark will go away or fire the propulsion cannon. <laughs> Get the bends! I think I'm firing the gun. If you just... Alright, we're gonna fire in the gun. 20. You fire the special propulsion charge and zoom upward through the water, frightening schools of fish as you go. You become dizzy and lose track of where you are. The world seems upside down. The shark is nowhere around you, Hope. Breaking through to the surface and floating about a half a mile away from the marae, you unsuccessfully try to reach them with your digital communicator. The lookout spots you in the water and they quickly rescue you. Unfortunately, the rapid ascent has given you a bad case of the bends. <laughs> it takes a long time to decompress, and when you are finally alright, the ship's doctor informs you that your underwater days are over. Someone else will have to find Atlantis. I'm gonna wait. Let's wait. Wait, 22. You wait for the shark to go away. No luck. Other sharks are coming to join the hunt. They circle you, coming closer and faster each time. It's too late. There is no escape. The largest shark, jaws gaping, strikes, but misses, and hits the other shark to his right, taking him down in a blaze of absolute glory. You've never seen such fish react this way. After the first shark is dead, a second tries to go in to bite your leg. You move, it bites the first shark. Just moments after, the crew lands and grabs the second shark, swings him around like a ball and chain, and throws him out of the ocean, 
onto the land where he starts to decay and rapidly decompress in a moment's notice. Just then, Dracula shows up, dives down into the water, picks you up, and flies you to safety into his nest up in a tree 15 miles above the surface. What do you do? Do you thank Dracula for everything that he has done? Or do you spit in Dracula's face? I don't know. This got weird. I'm going to spit in Dracula's face. 41. That, 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 that's, there he is. You rear back and get a huge loogie in your mouth. You spit it directly into Dracula's face. Livid and angry, Dracula wipes the spit from his mouth, grabs you by your throat, leans directly into your face and says, How could you do something like that? I just rescued you. I just saved you. How could you do something so terrible to somebody that has just done something so wonderful for you? You spit again in his face and a fight breaks out. Two punches to your left. You, make, you, you get naked. And Dracula's wondering why you're naked. He has no idea. He starts to scream and turns into a bat and flies away while you're screaming naked in his face. He gets out finally. You throw your lasso around Dracula's legs and pull him back down to the nest. And he's like, whoa, what are you doing? And you punch him directly in his face. He snaps his fingers and you teleport into the bottom of the ocean. And there you see 15 people from all walks of life. And all of them gaze up at you, and your clothes are returned immediately, because underwater you change costumes immediately. What do we do? Do you go back to the zoo? Or do you thank them for their friendliness? <laughs> That's it. That book's over. What was that? I, that was weird. I, fuck, I don't know. I didn't write that shit. That was kind of fucking weird, man. Hey, you want to know what happened in fucking World War II? Why not? Let's find out what happened in World War II. Cool. Here we go. <laughs> Early Friday morning, May 10th, 1940, you awake to the sound of popping noises filling up the air. What's going on, you ask? Those are German planes. Your brother shouts, pointing to the sky. They're shooting at our planes. But the Netherlands is neutral. We're not part of the war. Uh, that doesn't matter to Hitler, your brother says. First he attacked Poland, then Norway and Denmark, and now he's coming for us. <laughs> I can't direct. You take aim with your sniper rifle, aiming directly into the window where Hitler is. You see him, sitting. Sipping his tea. Rage fills your heart. How could you be such a monster of a person? You calm your nerves. And as you pull the trigger, you think of all the terrible things and how the war will finally end. The bullet comes out of the sniper rifle you're aiming into Hitler's house. Straight through his window. Right through his neck. Takes him out. He grabs his neck, starts screaming, looking around, trying to figure out what happened. Five people come into the room. Headshot! 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 You take out every single extremely important Nazi officer in the time it takes to brew a pot of coffee. The Nazis are no more. You pick up the gun. Whoo! You blow on the nozzle. And the helicopter comes by and lands. And the president of the United States, the President of the United Kingdom, and the President of Russia, and the President of Denmark, and the President of... I can't read that country. All collectively high five. You too, you're also part of this. Every single country on earth together finally tickies him out. The celebration is roarous when you come home. Parades, children screaming in the air, singing your songs for generations. You did it, Jeremy. You did it, one of the children says, and you high-five that child 
and the child next to him, and the child next to him. You are even bigger than the Patriots parade that happened when the Patriots won the Super Bowl three times. There were so many people, you couldn't even control it. And then, do you get elected as the new president of the world? Or do you turn to charity and help make the world a better place doing something else equally as important? I don't take labels. Since the first settlers landed in Virginia in 1607, the American colonies have been a part of Great Britain. Most people came to the colonies from Europe in search of better lives. Some came to the colonies to start businesses or farms. Others came as servants for wealthy people who paid for their trip across the Atlantic. Still others... This is talking about, like, slavery. So others came as servants for wealthy people who paid for their trip across the Atlantic. Okay, that... What the fuck? That's it for that one. Back to the zoo! <laughs> Welcome to Western history. Yeah, it's a fucking mess. Wait, hold on. Let me read the next line. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me read the next line. Uh, others... Hold on. Others came as servants for wealthy people who paid for their trip across the Atlantic. Still, others weren't there by choice. They were kidnapped in Africa and brought to the colonies as slaves. That's fucked up. I thought they were talking... I thought they were trying to make that like, oh, yeah, whatever. That's fucked up. Fucking American history. Fuck the colonies. Yeah, yeah. Demonetized. No. Do I have any more books? I don't think I have any books. That's it. There's no more. Says the guy in Massachusetts. Yeah, but col fuck the colonies. I'm gonna go live in California. Play a game? Uh, that was April Fools, man. Read Lord of the Rings. <laughs> no, that's it. I'm fucking done. <laughs> that's it. Get a haircut on stream. I actually, you know, the funny thing is for April Fools, I was going to do that. I was actually going to get a haircut on stream and it was going to be fucking horrible. It was going to be like shaved in the middle here and like I was going to leave this. And leave the back too. Like, I was gonna get the whole Kogan haircut. 
But, like, I, that's that's too much. I don't want to do that shit. I'm 30 fucking two. You know what I mean? I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm not doing, like, as, like, a 32-year-old man, I'm not going to have one of those, like, jokey idiot haircuts. I'll look like such an idiot. I mean, I look like an idiot now. Don't get me wrong. Go read Goosebumps. Uh, maybe we'll do this again next year at April Fool's. <laughs> How can I hate the colonies if I have a colonial haircut? <laughs> Cause I fucking hate them. That's why. Shave my eyebrows. What's wrong with my eyebrows? My eyebrows are fine. You thought the dinner stream was the April Fool's stream. Um, no. I wanted to do that on stream. I wanted to, like, you know, that was just a stream. This is this was the April Fool's funny, like, book stream. Shave the shirt. No, I think it was April Fool's. No, this is, today is April Fool's. Anyways, uh, that's it. Happy, happy, I was gonna say happy. Yeah, happy Easter. It is fucking Easter. Happy Easter. If you celebrate Easter. It's April Fool's and Easter. That. Not very, not very often is that going to happen. How, how often does that happen? Happy April Fool's, everybody. <laughs> uh, the Inkle devs are making a new game. That's awesome. I'll play it. But uh, that's going to be it for this. This is just a little dumb thing I wanted to do. Hopefully it was entertaining enough. And if it wasn't, then, you know, like, fuck me. You know what I mean? Like, fuck me if it wasn't. That's all I gotta say. Fuck me. Fuck the colonies. Fuck the family. Fuck the Albertsons. If the Albertsons get to do it, then I get to do it too, so... If, if, if LB gets to do one, then the rest of us do. It's kind of fucking irritating, though. And I don't know, I don't know which, which, there's like, the, I don't know which one of the three is going to, um, end up in the well. I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, putting on lipstick. <laughs> Uncle Lou, he was fucking great. He's he was a fucking great uncle my whole life. He was great when I was growing up. He was great when I was in in trouble. He was great. He was fucking great always. And he still is. What? He's great. He's doing great. He's great. He's great. He's doing great. They went home. He went home. They all went home. <laughs> I don't believe you. Good night, guys. Let's do the bits. Thanks for coming out. I'll see you guys on Tuesday for... Wait for it. Monster Rancher 3. We're going to start Monster Rancher 3 on Tuesday. In case unless something horrible happens, which it shouldn't, but PlayStation 2. See you then. Yeah. Have a good rest of your Easter. Let's go over the credits. And credits. No, oh, not starting soon. Thank you, everybody that subbed and resub tonight. Roll them. Hey, everybody. Thanks a lot for this. See you on Tuesday. Uh, thank you, Theodore Weiss, Gnostic Polish Drug Lord, G. Flota, uh, Don Speeder, Nickel, Rackbird, Bob132125, Leylays, Mr. Champ6190, Kai Jug, Verilic Ardum Prism019, Funky Tunk, Perez Twiggy, uh, Madagraster, Terrible 
signed. Lego Guy 3022, I'm Nami, Rustler Buckets, Robo Gandalf, Small Dog Soup, Scrub, Bam, Sawtown, Sea Witch, Zevo, Bro Butter, <laughs> Warrior of Shoe, Plague Bots, Shagums, Deadly SP, Borderline Psychopathic, WCX Hennessy, Stalin Hamburger, Sir Feline, Circle Butt, Retard Joe, FD Assassin Alex Pop 11, Renegade, Variable, Ledge, Pastor Whiskey, Light Bearer 2077, uh, Chicken, Suppery, Suppery Buttery, Suppery Eyes, I know what it says, Stanktron, Joshua, Pause, Zeke, Nitro 191, Scotty, A Rube, Deathman Jones, Choji, Sophomoric Man, Bird Flu, Jared 005, Dr. Fabs, <laughs> Uber TV, Wishes, Pie Loaded Shotgun, Captain Morshu, Ferocious, Tie Lady, Blastolosis, Prycosis, AMGG, Lucretius, Will Sarcasm, Scott 71, 3 TF2, H. Strister, It's Vex, Phonotic, Cloud, Satan's Weed Whacker, Masta, Apollo, Pajigalo, Steck, Vin, Luma, Mad Ninja, PJ2506, Blue Wolf, Tom Foolery, Novi, Ari Lad, Dead Eyes, Desperado, Ajaja Jaja5, Ham Hijab, Hyena Dip, Doom Ninja, Shockwave, Dammy Tree, Asha108, Porcupine Applesauce, uh, Nick Knack, Kaido, Tom Doro, Waffle Fries, Ratuna, Based Grandpa, Hayes, and Stortles. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks for subbing. Thanks for resubbing. Appreciate that. And let's go to the bits. Stream wasn't that long tonight. Just wanted to do that. You know, <laughs> fucking LOL. You know what I mean? It was like a fucking LOL. It was an April fucking LOL stream. But thanks, everybody. We'll be back to business as usual on Tuesday. Uh, let's go down here. Earlier. <laughs> the dinner would have been better if it was Blue Apron. No. Don't talk about the skills. Of, don't talk about the cooking skills. Okay? Didn't have time. Uh, thank you, iBags, for the $1. Hey, broadcaster, found your channel through the Thousand Games video. Then again through the Fallout New Vegas on the second channel. Love the content. Thank you, Ibags. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, Assbag42069, thanks for the $1. Very excited for what this fool has in store for us. Huh? Thanks, man. Uh, Frexter, thanks for the $1. When are we going to see Uncle Lou again? Whenever he comes over. Whenever he's, you know, around. It's my uncle, so why wouldn't he be around? Maybe sometime in the future, maybe in the near future. Thank you, though. Thank you, uh, N Pudding, for the one dollar. Here's a dollar to the meme. Here's a here's a dollar. Do the meme. Uh, I don't know which one. I don't know what you're talking about. Which meme? Techno Toast. Thanks for the seventy-five cents. Puberty Two. Electric Boogaloo. Mm-hmm. 3D Red, thanks for the one dollar. Uh, I had a dream you had a haircut, and when I realized it wasn't real, I was upset. <laughs> thanks, man. Th thank you, Indiana500, for the one dollar. In before the April Fool's joke. By the time this is read, I'm sure he'll, I'll get the joke and laugh. Very funny. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Uh, what... I mean... What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> Uh, congenital heart defect. Thanks for the 50 cents. Jerbo, your hair is approaching the 90s teenage boy level. Yeah, didn't somebody, somebody call this uh, the, the sweet life of Kylo Ren or something? That, I killed, that slayed me a month or two ago. Thank you, though, dude. Thank you, the, the Wombat from Hell, for the $1. I'm here to offer the good people of this chat a new deal. Uh, I don't know what that means, but thanks, man. Uh, Son of Genova, thanks for the $1. I know your secret. Your actual parents appear in the auto video. You can't trick me. 
Um, what are you talking about? The, my, pa my parents? I'm not in that any... What are you talking about? Those are like two friends of mine. Uh, Sir Ella Wellington, thanks for the one dollar. Long story short, stopped watching a lot of content creators when I started college, and you are still hilarious even after a year and a half. Thank you for the comedy, save the seagulls, and please do not die in a clown car crash. <laughs> I, why, so many people thought I was gonna like turn on the stream and crash the clown car today. That's so obvious. You know how obvious that is? April Fool's guy crashes a clown car. No, that's gonna happen in like the middle of June. You know what I mean? So, you know, I don't want to you know, know when that's gonna happen. But thank you, uh, Sir Lowington. I appreciate it. Flubbagut, thanks for the $1. From good times to bad, pretty much the route this stream is taking. <laughs> Pause call, thanks for the one, uh, $10 here. 10 bucks, dude, thank you. Hey, Germa, this is the first time I really caught on air. You really helped me out with depression when I had a bad time, and really want to thank you for that and your videos. Thank you, Pause call, for the 10 bucks. I'm happy to have you here. First time you've caught a stream live. And I hope you take care of yourself, man. Because that's not fun to feel like that. If I can help in any way, then I am absolutely glad to. Thank you, dude. Flubbagut, thanks for the one dollar here. Did I really stay up until 1 a.m. to learn about the Great Depression with Germa? I mean, I guess that isn't really something to complain over. <laughs> oh, Garfield paragraph. Incoming. No, not yet. Sir Feline, thanks for the one dollar. Yo, Germer, it's me, Jeff from Psychology 101. Uh, I would imagine, I would rec could you recommend any doctors to take care of my seagull? Uh, me. At some point, maybe. Thank you, Gnostic, for the one dollar. Never stop being yourself. That's all I can be. I don't know how to be anybody else. I don't know. I don't know how to be anybody else, man. I only know how to be me. That's like, did, did, you, did I read that on the back of a fucking tabloid? Was that on my horoscope this afternoon? I can only know how to be me. But, thank you. Appreciate it, man. Smellyboy11, thanks for the $1. I can't believe you drank pee pee before this funny April Fool's stream. Really fucked up. Well, I don't know where you're getting the idea that I drank piss before the stream, but that's alright. Flubbagut, thanks for the $1. How wrong I was, that touching story of letting your brother venture out into the world alone and then tattling on him when he comes home. I will never reflect on life the same. Thank you, Mr. Germa, for giving me such an experience. <laughs> uh, thank you, Training Book, for the $1. As a kid, I had a club penguin choose-your-own-adventure where you got turned into a puffle. I never, I never played club penguin. This club, wasn't that, that was like, um, it was like an MMO chat room, right? Where you could go bowling and do shitty mini games on the side, right? But thanks, man. Thank you, sir. Official potato for the $1. Here, have some freelance money so you can outdo your brothers. <laughs> yeah. So important, those two. It's okay, though. Uh, Garfield the Monday Killer. <clears throat> Thanks for the for the 25 cents here, and uh, I'm happy to say that my date went extremely well thanks to your advice. We walked around a mall after the movie and chatted it up. I can't thank you enough for improving my life in countless ways. You got me through a lot of tough times. Hope you always remember how much you mean to all you fans. I know you think my bits aren't sincere and everything is just a funny joke to Garfield, but remember this. I said what I said, and I said what I meant, and a Garfield's word is 100%. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks, man. Thank you, Garfield. Your bits are always, um, always very interesting to read. You've been telling, I, somebody should get, like, every bit you've ever said. And just put it together and sell it as a novel. Garfield. My bit donations. Thanks, dude. Tuna salad, thanks for the one dollar. Greatest idea for a stream. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you for watching. Uh, interesting. I mean, dumb is the word, too. But I had fun. 
some of those encounters were for children, you know. All of those encounters were for children. That's okay. I mean, whatever. <laughs> when is somebody gonna make a, like a, an adult choose your own adventure book, where you get to do adult things and you get to choose what you want to do, and and it could be like M rated. And no, no, before everyone starts freaking the fuck out, no, I'm not talking about, like, pornographic material. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, like, a vampire story, or a murder mystery, but it's dark and gritty. It's called a visual novel. No, that's not, I'm not talking about a visual novel. I'm not talking about, like, a telltale game. Do your taxes. <laughs> Uh, thank you to Wild Omelette for the $1. Near the end of the family dinner stream, Grandpa Gus said he had a thing for Smurfs. Did you write that? Or did he come up with that? I, I don't w write what? I, don't, I can't script my family. That's not how it works. I actually got a scolding by my father later on. Or, he did, you know, he got scolded. Had to hear about it. But, thanks, man. Uh, thank you, Rocco Forto, for the ten bucks. Hey, German, just want to tell you that you came up in a conversation with my friend the other day. He doesn't watch the streams, and he assumed four foot tall... Yeah. Uh, may... Makes you wonder about what the world thinks of you, huh? <laughs> Thanks for the 10 bucks, dude. Appreciate it. Tell that guy I said... Fuck out of here. Tell him I said fuck out of here. Thank you for the 10 bucks, though. Metal Sand, thanks for the $1. World War II RP stream. Or fake. <laughs> oh, RuneScape World War II RP stream. Or fake. Morning Maple, thanks for the one dollar. Uncle Jeremy, for the Under the Sea book, I vote for SpongeBob music. <laughs> no, it's too late now. Techno Toast, thanks for the one dollar. I for one love the season of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, where Guy Fieri goes under the sea to find some delicious burgers to steal and store in a heavily guarded vault in Flavortown National Burger Bank. I, I Guy Fieri, I, why does Sporty people not like Guy Fieri? Is there a reason why people don't like Guy Fieri? Yeah, what's wrong with him? He's got a funny haircut. Is that... Is that it? His, I like his show. He's got a great show. When you, I have this thing. Where I have to eat. If I order takeout. I have to bring it back and I have to eat while I'm watching a food show. I have to. I can't eat and watch some regular fucking TV show. I gotta have a, an, an in-depth food on the screen, person eating food TV show. And I, I, some diners, drive-ins, and dives is just him eating cheeseburgers and I'm also eating and I'm vicariously living through him, but also coming back to reality and seeing the food that I have. And I'm like, this is awesome. I'm really hungry and I have this too, guy. And we're connecting. He's a little obnoxious. He became a meme, but he's not a bad guy. He's what's he's, he's like a good dude, isn't he? Doesn't he look like a really nice guy? Your mom went to high school with Guy Fieri. Really? <laughs> Was he just as interesting? Oh, he's apparently awful off screen. Really? Like, that's, that's like, I don't know. I just watch him eat cheeseburgers on camera. I don't know anything about his life. High school theory. I don't know. Whatever, anyways. Techno Toast, thanks for the $1. Again. Uh, Cyrus Dexter, thanks for the one buck. Uh, $1 has been added to your account. Thanks. I will use it for something. 
Everyone on the production team of season one and two fucking hated him and left and sued the Food Network. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, this is a spoiler for a video that I want to do. But just like, don't just like, look, I cop, I'm like, I'm like copywriting this stream. So, April 1st, 2018, this is my idea. I'm saying this shit. You know what I mean? So if somebody does this, oh, fuck them. And like, I'll come back and I'll be like, this is me. I said this shit back here. Uh, an idea that I wanted to do. Why am I, no, I'm not gonna, why am I saying this? This is fucking funny. I'm not gonna say this. No, because I want to do this. All right, anyways. Thank you to... You can't just say I'm copywriting this. Yes, but if you, if somebody claims, uh, if somebody does something or claims something that they said and they made something and you can prove with a date stamp that you did it first, you can bring them to court and you can actually fucking push that narrative forward that you did it first. And that like, whoa, hold on a second. They, they must have taken it from here. I'm copywriting this stream right now. <laughs> That's not how copyright works. What are you talking about? If I draw a cartoon character on screen, and it's Dave, uh, Dave the Slug, right? Oh, Dave the Slug, there he is. David the Slug. This is my character I created, and I'm creating him on camera for you right now. And then Dave the Slug becomes a Nickelodeon cartoon show that I never signed off on. I have, I could, I could actually have a problem with that, and I could probably sue Nickelodeon. Right? Like that, why the hell wouldn't I? That's original content. <laughs> I'm copywriting it now. It's a drawing, not an idea. Well, what isn't an idea? What's an idea then? You can't copyright ideas, only creations. Well, what, what, the, if I'm, I created it. I'm drawing it right now, talking about this character I made. And you're seeing it on screen. That, if that's Dave the Slug, and then there's a Dave the Slug Nickelodeon show, I can say, hey, what the fuck, I made this like three years ago on stream. And they did it. Yeah. That, what do you mean? I could get, I, they we're not gonna get away with that. They're not gonna get away with that. Let's see them try to get away with it. You guys see a Dave the Slug Nickelodeon cartoon? Call me. If you actually drew it. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> it's intellectual property. Just by talking about it here, I'm copywriting it. I, I know, I was told a long time ago that... Um, this was in some, like, acting class or, like, writing class or something back in college. That if you send yourself an email to document something, right... So let's say I told somebody, Hey, I got this great idea for a TV show, and here it is. And here's all the characters' names, and here's all the settings, and here's exactly what's going to happen in the first episode. If you email yourself that exact thing that you sent to somebody, you have, like, a timestamp date provable, like, you that's yours. Fucking email yourself, guys. <laughs> so write a letter to yourself, you know? But anyways, <laughs> let's move on. Uh, <laughs> where were we here? There we go. Uh, Juco or Jukobi, thanks for the two bucks. Ocean Boy is what they say, thank you. Uh, Tree Fitty, 1992, thanks for the 50 cents. Or I couldn't donate more bits, but the damn Loch Ness monster came by and asked for Tree Fitty again. Remember, Jerry, capture him if you see him. He likes... <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fiddle, for the one dollar. Thank you, the Pat Marsons, for the four bucks. Chat may say a lot of things about you, Germa, but no one can say you aren't innovative. You'll never fail to get me to laugh every stream, and I look forward to watching them when I can. Thank you. Thank you, uh, the Pat Marsons. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for the four dollars. Peaceful Haley, thanks for the $1. You look like Lord Farquaad with your hair. Besides that, you're a cool guy. Keep being weird. Love you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Peaceful Haley. 
Uh, what else we got here? Uh, ham, ham hijab. Thanks for the. Oh, no, I'm saying that wrong. I'm gonna uh, ham, hit hijab, right? I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, thanks for the five dollars, Jeremy. How many bits will it take to get you to? I am pregnant, my girlfriend. Oh fucking Jesus Christ! Uh, thank you, Samuel Sish, for the five dollars. Jerma, I know we bust your chops with goofy bits. Yeah? Do you? Do you know? I was talking with some guys in the Discord the other night about how awesome it is to become involved with a community like yours. I genuinely think your sense of humor rubs off on us. All your jokes feel expertly calculated. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, as long as you guys are having fun, that's all I care about. As long as we can all enjoy ourselves, that's the most fun thing to do, right? <laughs> oh, what a joke, scientist. Again, Samuel Sish, thanks for the five bucks. Uh, I just wanted to take a joke from... Uh, take, I wanted to take a break from stupid joke bits and show my actual appreciation to you. The above and beyond effort you put into your videos inspired my own work. Thanks for all the laughs, man. Here's my streamer tax. Don't break my legs. Thank you, Sam. I am happy to be here. Happy you guys are here as well. Someone said they rub one. Oh God, <laughs> rub one off. I can't. I have to stop saying things. I'm one of those fucking stupid idiots that just reads, and you know, can't do that shit. Can't do that shit. I have to start, like, skipping things and not saying that I'm just such a dumb fucking idiot moron dumbass. But, uh, not, that's nothing to do with you, Sam. Thank you so much. Uh, Garfield the Monday Killer with, uh, 25 cents. Happy Easter, Jerma. A great time for new beginnings. I've always seen you as an inspiration creatively. On top of voice acting, comics, and the musical, I've also taken up writing fantasy comedy. Adventures, stories with Pookie. A lot of my creative process comes from watching your streams. One of the main heroes of the story is actually based mostly on you and your sense of humor. At this point, you should know the most active thing about me is my imagination. Garfield, I, you got a very vivid imagination, judging by how carefully crafted your bit comments are. Appreciate it. Wish you the best of luck in your new creative endeavor. Fred Flintstone, thanks for the $1. Where's your book? Also, Peanut Butter. Surge. What? Just pretend one of those books was mine. Uh, S Dog Man, S Dog A Man, thanks for the $1. This joke is a bit funny. I'm sorry if I only ever give you money in bits and pieces. Hope you don't mind me donating. I'd hate to leave a bitter taste for you. I asked my friend about sending you a dollar and he said, Don't worry, he already bit off his mouthful. These jokes were a bitch to write. <laughs> thanks, dude. Uh, and Doxon, thanks for the 25 cents. I don't have much to give, but I want to know you're my favorite entertainer on the entire internet. I've shown all my friends rat movie and they hate me. No, but I still love you despite that. That's the... <laughs> oh, hey, you're my favorite. I love you. I showed you to my friends and they fucking hate you. They don't like me anymore. <laughs> thanks, dude. Glad you liked it. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Smelly Boy Eleven. Thanks for the one dollar. How does the family feel about the situation with? We'll move on from that one. Casey, thanks for the five bucks. Vinny said he wants to meet you when he's in Boston next week. Can we get a co-op stream? I actually think I'm. I, I probably am gonna see Vinny and Kriken. I'll be hanging out with Kriken, Vinny. I'll probably, I'll probably actually there's a lot of people I'll be seeing at Pax East. Should be fun. I don't know about, like, streams or anything. I haven't really talked about that or anything. I, maybe. Maybe we'll do, like, a stream or a video. I don't know. I'm not going to put that in your brain. I think we're just going to hang out. Uh, but anyways. Thank you. To uh, Sprio for the five bucks. I love your content and personality so much, dude. One more thing as well. When is the accused stream? When's the accused stream? It's all ready to go. I just need to put it in a place where it's going to make sense. 
I was gonna do it today, but just wasn't really... It, it's like Easter, and this weekend was a little bit busy. Had the family over, obviously, right? So, um, next week is PAX. I might do it a Tuesday is Monster Rancher 3. It's, I it might have to wait a little while, but it will happen. It's, it's on the cards and it's done. It just needs to be on a day when I know I'm going to be able to do it. And next weekend's not that day because it's PAX. And remember, PAX is Thursday through Sunday. So I'm not going to be live Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'll be live on Tuesday and probably Wednesday. Yeah, well, we'll do Tuesday and Wednesday this coming week. And then maybe I might be on somebody's stream over the weekend. I have no idea. But, you know. We'll see. Uh, thank you to... Thank you to BitSlave for the 25 cents. Hey, Jerma, I'm too poor to give you money, so I have to farm bits from ads. Don't be mad. I can move more bits for you next week. Don't break my legs. Thank you. Thank you, Bit. You don't have to You don't have to farm ads for me. Like, that sounds like a... I've said this before, but man, that sounds like a huge pain in the ass. Thank you for being here and watching. Thanks, dude. Superintendent Chalmers, thanks for the one dollar. Keldos, thanks for the one dollar. Hey, German, love the family dinner stream. Will you do more stuff like that in the future? And how are the projects on the main channel coming along? Owl face. Uh, yes. Yes, uh, yes to all those things. So, stay tuned. Thank you, though. Thank you, Official Blue Apron, for the 25 cents. The dinner would have been better if it was catered by Blue Apron. It probably would have been, but, you know, whatever. Uh, thank you, Bitslave, again for the 25 cents. Also, Your Majesty, I forgot to thank Your Highness for gracing us with Monster Rancher 3. I just, like, burped. Sorry. Should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Sam N. Mod Sam N. Thanks for the 79 cents. Twitch won't let me watch more ads. Insert shitty pun here. <laughs> well, you don't have to watch ads. I don't even run ads on this stream. How are people getting ads? Is it do it, is it possible? I'm pretty sure I turn. I don't like run ads here, and subs don't get ads, right? Something like that. But yeah, thank you, Sam. Thank you, Bitslave, again for the 25 cents. Oh yes, one last thing, my lord. Calvin and Hobbes is number one. I agree. Oh, you can watch them if you want. Okay, I see. I thought you guys were talking about, like, refreshing the page and getting an ad, like a preload ad. So you can actually sit there and click a button to watch ads for bits. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, well. Uh, thank you to Shekel for the $1. Team Pepe. Um, Pepe. I think you're, um, I think you're talking about the frog. Thanks, dude. Uh, thank you to Hawkeye for the $1. Your Uncle Lou looks like Doc Brown. <laughs> thank you, Garfield the Monday Killer for the 25 cents. I was so upset during the dinner stream. I know how it's like to deal with a disapproving family. I was bullied for most of my life, and no one wanted to hang out with me during my high school because of my appearance or thought I acted weird. I can't thank you enough for getting me through those tough times. Because of you, I was able to find true friends that liked me because they are just as funny and understanding as you. Thanks for letting this cat get his fairy tale ending. Um, I know that I, I, are you like, are, are you still RPing? If you aren't, then I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry that that happened to you, but I'm glad that you have made friends. I'm glad that you're doing good. Got some friends, you got shit going on, but, uh, you are still Garfield. <laughs> you are still Garfield. Appreciate it though, man. Uh, thank you, Sergil Butt, for the 25 cents. They say Kappa. Cyan TF2, thanks for the $1. I missed the stream. Do it again. Uh, rewind it. You can just go over and go right to the very beginning. Uh, thank you again. Thank you. Uh, there's another Garfield here. Hey, Garfield. Garfield 2. Hey, thanks for the $1. He says, hey, cutie. Thanks, Garfield. <laughs> thanks. Thank you, Garfield. 
Uh, Hawkeye of mine, thanks for the three bucks. Guy Fieri is a meme because of a webcomic. Made him the dictator, the Hitler-like dictator, as well as the Antichrist. What? What is this snort? Oh boy, that's, I don't like that. Oh, that was fucking stupid. Oh, I hate everything about this. I fucking hate everything about that. I don't like that at all. Oh, that's embarrassing me. I need to click off of that. I don't get embarrassed by anything. Holy shit, that's actually embarrassing me. <laughs> Good thing the webcam's on, because I'm like fucking turning red. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Metal Sand, for the 25 cents. There's no such thing as a Gorfield. Don't believe his lies. Uh, Locky Man, thanks for the $1. Hi, I'm a dum dum. Oh, thanks, Locky. Stapler, thanks for the 25 cents. Glue Man shirt re release when? I have other shirts I want to do before I really, like, redo that one. Metal Sand, thanks for the 25 cents. Garfield's real identity is Connie. It's Connie. Connie. Okay. Remember I told you about that thing about reading stuff? Uh, Wonka, thanks for the 45 cents. Happy 43rd birthday. Thanks, man. Phil's birthday, man. Appreciate it. Mr. Fiddle, thanks for the one dollar. Hey, German, when are we gonna go... When are you gonna go follow your true calling and be a... a cam... Thanks for the fifth... Uh, thanks for the dollar, Mr. Fiddle. Big Mama, thanks for the five bucks. Don't forget... Matt... McDonald's with a lot... I don't know what the fuck you're saying. You're talking about eating like a McRib or something. Whatever. Thanks for the five bucks. Thank you, Topak, for the five dollars. You get there's so many like fucking things. I have no idea what's even going on sometimes. Topak, thanks for the five dollars. I have no idea how you do it, but you always end up one up one upping yourself with the stream specials. Can't wait for the next stream to commence. Thanks, Topak. <laughs> Thank you, dude. We're just having a little bit of fun, you know. Uh, Big Mama again. Thanks for the five dollar. Oh yeah, one time one of my friends fought it in a Ziploc bag and opened it into my face during a gaming session. What are you fucking talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> Why? Are you, you got that from the movie Jack, okay? With Robin Williams. I've seen that movie. You got that from the movie Jack. Thank you. Thank you, the amazing pie man, for the 50 cents. Uh, Banjo, Banjo Boy says that he made a play with characters named after you and Kim on YouTube called the T for Two, a one act play. I have to watch it. It would make his day. Now, I'll watch it after the stream. For sure. Thanks, amazing pie man. Uh, Asher108, thanks for the two bucks. My hands smell like garbage. Thanks, Jerma. What? Why? What did you do? Bitslave, again, thanks for the 25 cents. I have hundreds of Bitslave accounts. I had to rough up some randos to steal their bits. I hope you don't mind hot bits. I'm gonna go get some more real quick. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Some of these messages are getting, like, more and more, like, meta-meme. Like we have like so we have a lot of like meta meme accounts, you know what I mean, on on this channel. <laughs> Thank you, Machete Mario. Thanks for the one dollar. Snort for sub sound. No. Casey, thanks for the one dollar. When are you gonna get the Monster Rancher Tim Allen sub sound when we play Monster Rancher again, which should be Tuesday. Cyan TF2, thanks for the one dollar. Don't worry, that noise is copyright now. Yeah, it is. Bit Slave again. Thanks for the twenty-five cents. I've got pure one hundred percent Colombian bits for you. I don't, I don't want these these bits. I don't want these drug bits. Clean these up. Put them through. You clean these bits up a little bit. Send them to a car wash first, and then to take them out into your bank account, and then get you know what I mean, like that fucking Breaking Bad show. Uh, another a Gar, another Garfield. Garfield comes in again with a dollar. Remember when John bought us cocktails and lasagna after the wedding? God, fuck it. This, this Garfield thing. Metal Sand, thanks for the $1. It looks like I'm the fool of April this day. Yes. Maybe. I think it's me. 
Thank you, uh, Novi, for the three bucks. If those were really your brothers, what were their names? It was Danny and Dylan. Those are my brothers. I don't know what, what do you think I don't remember my fucking brother's names? Please. That stream was live, too. That was not pre-recorded. That was not a broadcast of a fucking video. Asha 108, thanks for the $1. I took out the trash earlier. Thanks, Jerm. Hey, good. Glad you got the trash taken out. Uh, Big Mama again with $5. Thanks for the 5 bucks. What movie was that you said? I need to add it to my Amazon watch list. I don't, what movie, what movie did I say? I said a movie? I don't know, I have no idea. Thank you, Bitslave again for the 25 cents. The Calvin and Hobbes police are after me. I moved bits that were too hot. You need to burn the books right now. They're not my books. John Arbuckle, thanks for the 25 cents. Any recommended cat food brands? Sure, uh, get natural balance. It's really good for your animal. Uh, Pickled Llama, thanks for the $4. Good night, German. Good night, Pickled Llama. Thanks for sticking around. Techno Toast, thanks for the 75 cents. Local streamer advises chat on how to money lander their hot bits uh, to the on stream. Thanks, dude. Thank you, Mr. Fiddle, for the $1. Jeremy, this is your father. I'm highly disappointed with you. I didn't raise you to spit in Dracula's face like that. Um, I'm sorry, Dad. Bitslave again for the 25 cents. You're a genius, Jerma. I whacked the doofus who owned this car wash into selling the place to me. I can get these laundered bits to you in a jiffy. No, you don't talk about it. You don't say it. You don't, you don't say a crime you're committing. Are you insane? Didn't you see the movie Breaking Bad? That's not how it works. And you need to, uh, and the, yeah, but dude, snap the phone in half. You need to do that like 12 times, like 13 times in the course of the whole show. You need to grab the phone and break the thing in half and take the top part off. Do it, kid. Like, do it like in the camera. Quick. Thank you, Asha108, for the $1. New sub sound idea. Make a loud snort. You can thank me later. Thank you, Bitslave, again. Shit's too dicey. I gotta move the last of the bits to Switzerland. I've got a far more ads. I'll boast my earnings with you next stream. Jesus Christ. Novi 33333. Thanks for the 90 cents. German, please do the official podcast. Fuck. I fucking I, I can't even like remember to do this shit. You see how hard it is? You see how hard it is for me to even remember that I said I wanted to do that? You writing this to me in a bit message just reminded me that I said I was gonna do that. I forgot what happened last week. I have the brain of a dog. A very intelligent dog. What's the smartest dog? It's a border collie, right? I am as smart as the most intelligent dog. I am the like a human version of the border collie, right? Very smart. Again, Garfield. Hi, Garfield again. All jokes aside, the fact that I made an alt meme account shows how much we love you. I keep it up, honey. Thank you, Garfield. Appreciate it. <laughs> and with that, thanks a lot, guys. See you on Tuesday. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Sayonara. Ta-ta for now.